downgrade is to go back to level zero. So there would be no need for a PayPal button in that case. The reason that this is in here for downgrading to level one is, is for the application of custom capabilities. If you were to use a level one with several different custom capability packages, which again, we're going to cover these in more detail in another video. I just want to point out why this is here because this is very confusing to a lot of people why that would even be there. This is here in case you wanted to downgrade a level one to a new package of custom capabilities. So essentially it would still require a PayPal button because it would change the way the subscription is built and also change the number or the, the type of custom capabilities that that customer would have. Okay, so let's go ahead and collapse this now and move down to cancellation buttons. Okay. A cancellation button is extremely simple. There's no configuration necessary. It works the same for everyone. And all you do is just copy the shortcode that's already here in this field. And we're going to go back to our list of pages now and decide which one of these pages, or if both, we want to offer that button. Well, at level zero, if they're logging in and they're being redirected to the level zero login welcome page, well, there's nothing to cancel because that means there's a free, they're already a free subscriber and they're not being billed anything. So we only need that cancellation button on the level number one page. So I'll just click edit here. And instead of that modification link, I'll say, would you like to cancel? And I'll put in that shortcode for the cancellation button. Now you might want to reword this, or you might not even want to offer this. Now, I suggest that you do because it can help cut down on, on customer service inquiries. Uh, it might help save you some money in terms of uh, whoever's handling your customer service because this gives the customer the ability to cancel their own account. Uh, also, if, if your customer is associated with a PayPal account, which is the case a lot of times, they can also ca uh, log into their own PayPal account all by themselves and, and cancel their subscription all on their own. And whether they do it through the cancellation button, I'm going to go ahead and go and view this page now that I've updated it. Whether they click to unsubscribe or to cancel through this button or they go directly to their PayPal account and do it on their own, or even if you did it as the site owner, as the merchant, you logged into your PayPal account and canceled their subscription. In any of those cases, S2 member is always notified through the IPN service behind the scene. And another uh, uh, issue that, that causes some confusion, or I should say it casts some doubt or to some concern about how S2 member functions is how that process is handled. And so I'll touch on that just real, real quick. Whenever a cancellation occurs, a cancellation is, is special because when you cancel, you're not, you're not refunding any money. There's nothing being charged back. The, the customer or you as the signer is just saying you're, you're canceling. You're stopping all future billing. So in other words, that does not mean that the account access, where they have the ability to log into your site here, that does not mean that that access should stop immediately. So I'll give you a test case. If, if I'm a customer and I sign up for your site on January 1st, and I sign up on a monthly recurring billing pro, uh, plan, and I'm being billed $169 a month, and then I decide on the 15th of the month in January, in the same month I signed up, that I'm going to cancel. If I cancel, I've already paid you $169. So just because I cancel does not mean I should not be able to log back into your site until the end of January because I've already paid you $169. So S2 member uh, works out that logic and it handles that through its EOT system. That stands for end of term. So when a cancellation comes in, S2 member calculates all by itself when the termination of that account should occur at the appropriate time based on the date of their cancellation, based on whether they're within their trial period or not, uh, which is another situation. For example, let's say in this case, level one, I'm selling uh, on my membership options page. I'm selling uh, membership level one with a seven day free trial. So if the customer was to join up under the terms of a free trial and they cancel the third day into the trial, they've never paid you anything. So S2 member in that situation would immediately can't terminate their access. It wouldn't wait till the end of the month because they've never paid anything so they don't deserve to continue receiving access to your site so it's best remember it is very smart about how it handles those things and if you're ever in doubt about what it is actually doing uh, you can take a look at your logs uh, you can enable logging uh, let's go ahead and take a look uh, i'll switch back over to the site administration and show you how to enable logging 
if you go into your S2 member PayPal options and under your account details you can enable these logging routines and that will keep logs about the IP and return page uh, logging and this will help you build confidence in how S2 members reacting on your site and dealing with these different scenarios and, and these we've taken a lot of care to make sure that these are very comprehensive and, and so you can see exactly what is being done S2 member will detail in those log files for you uh, why it took the action and what, what, what triggered that action uh, and you can access those log files depending on your installation the location of those logs will be listed right here on this line and you just log in through FTP and download the uh, paypal-ipn.log file uh, and that way you can take a look at that okay so that's how you implement modification buttons without any custom coding at all without any advanced conditionals so in the next part of this video we're going to take a look at the API scripting section here and go over how you can be even more advanced with the way the logic is worked out and maybe even avoid having more than one login welcome page. Okay, we'll cover that in the next part.